Good afternoon, viewers. Welcome you, welcoming you to the HYD Live Hack series. HYD is a youth organization that has been constantly trying to help people in Bangladesh and the Bangladeshi youths time and again. The purpose of this series is to help you out about is to help you out regarding what NUNs are and how you can be good at it. We're also here to solve your uh, everyday problems regarding NUNs. Today we have a guest, get a guest delegate with us in HYD. Her name is Zafna Mustafis. She is the president of BISP MUN Club. She was also the campus ambassador in HYD Online MUN Bangladesh 2020. Welcome, Zafna Mustafis. Thank you. Uh, hello, guys. My name is Zafna, and you might know me as Arusa. That's the name I go by. Um, so, yeah, I've recently been elected the president in Bangladesh International School and College MUN Club. I've been in the circuit for around four years now, I think, three to four years. And I've had quite a variety of experience. And I'd have to say that they've all been amazing experiences. So, uh, Tasnia. Okay. So, Zafna, how did you get to know about NUS? I mean, what made you want to try it out? So I remember that in class eight, uh, I did not know anything about MUNs. I did not know what, I did not know anything about the world either. I had zero knowledge about IR. And they had an MUN club in our school and they had posters all around the school. And I was just wondering what is the full form of this word MUN? So um, after a while, I tried to do one. MUN. I went to the club. I asked them that, you know, what is it? And when I went there, right, I was just so intimidated by how amazing people are at the whole sport. And I did two at first in 2016, and I was just scared. I was scared of like, you know, it's just yeah. so much information, so much knowledge, so many skills that you need. And I thought I would never measure up to those things, right? I, I thought I would never be able to do those things. So I went into debating because, you know, debating is actually a lot easier. You have to, it's more about talking and constructive speaking, right? But MUNs have a variety of other skills that you need. So I skipped on MUNs and I went to debating. A year later, a friend of mine actually motivated me and he was the then president of my club. And he told me that, hey, if you're if you can actually do debating, why don't you try doing MUNs again? Maybe, you know, third time's the charm. So try it again. And I did. I tried the third time. I did a master MUN in 2018. And yeah, the third time was the charm. I did pretty well on that one. And the weirdest part was I did not know how the rules worked. I learned. I learned as we went. The first speech that I gave was absolutely nerve-wracking and absolutely all over the place. But the second speech got a little better and the next one got a little more better. And that's how like I learned throughout the experiences because I never had a constructive club to teach me how it's done, right? I never had web series about how uh, the rules work or hacks work. <laughs> okay, uh, so the rules of procedure or ROPs as we call it, you know, did they scare you off a bit? Because research is a like, uh, yeah, okay. So how did you get around to it? Getting around ROPs, I think like, ROPs are interesting, you know? It's, it's a lot like uh, you go to school for the first time and, you know, it's just like interesting because there are so many different rules, right? If I was in like kindergarten and following those rules is kind of interesting. And also bending those rules <laughs> you need is more interesting. So uh, I guess that's how I learned ROPs because I was always wanting to learn what is like, you know, the proper most way to uh, follow the rules here, right? How to like completely be prim and proper and in, into the stimulation, like into the actor role of the country. So yeah, that's how I went with it. I tried my very best to live up to that standard. And eventually, after like the third MUN, it was piece of cake. 
Okay, that's good to hear from somebody who is one of the best monos of the circuit. But uh, you know, these Thank days you. when uh, either you or me or any any monor in the circuit goes to a newbie and you know tries to explain to them what any ones are, sometimes they get uh, sort of uh, they shy away from. It. Mm -hmm. They sort of have a notion that anyone's require extensive research. It requires requires extensive efforts, and it's not, you know, as you say, it appears of cake, and it's not so easy to get. So they I mean, these days we see that, uh, you know, they are shying shying away from it, and they are not even trying it out, even though it's such a productive ECA. So how would you describe anyone's to somebody who has never done it before? To somebody who's never done it before, um, I guess it's a lot like a full free um, multitask video game, like Sims, okay? Or maybe <laughs> like, yeah, it's a lot like Sims, okay? You can do anything you want, right? It's it's literally like a role play video game. You can do anything you want. You can be anyone you want. You just have to follow a few rules, right? And that's about it. The skills that you learn, you don't have to learn them in the first one. You learn them as you go. And that's how it's like, you know, more interesting because every new month, every new committee, there's one new thing that you learn. And I'm still learning. I'm over 10 MUNs, but I'm still learning at every single new committee, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so what, what the, one of the most common questions that I face while trying to make people understand about what anyone's are, is that how is anyone different from debate? Okay. So um, I've done both. So MUNs basically, um, they're a little more vast than debates, but they're actually a lot more easier than debates, technically speaking. Because in debate tournaments, uh, you have to speak for eight entire minutes. And it's, it's actually the, it's the competition in itself is very hard. So if you go there as a first timer, it's kind of hard to cope. But it's also a very interesting environment to learn. But for MUNs, there are varieties of skills that you can learn and varieties of ways that you can do. There is no set formula. Right. And that is what makes it interesting. Right. So you can learn how to uh, negotiate with people. Right. And the best part about this is every single MUN skill that you will learn is a very key, important life skill. And that's what I mean, intrigues me the most about MUNs. Right. They teach you about diplomacy. You will need diplomacy with your brown family, with your uh, school, with your uh, workplace everywhere. Right. So. Yeah. Diplomacy, then connections, building friendships, being able to socialize and communicate with people. If you're living in a society, I mean, after the pandemic, when we're not socially distanced anymore, right? So you will need to socialize with people. And you learn that from MUNs because MUNs are like literally a hub for socializing. And about the academics of it, right? Because look, when you go into a circle of people like in a job or when, when people are having a discourse about something important, right? And you don't know shit about the world. So things might like get a little complicated for you, right? At the end of the day, uh, you know, when you're more educated about the world, you're culturally more appropriate. You're more understanding towards these people around the world. You can understand, relate to their problems, right? Because, you know, we don't live in just a bubble of our society as people it's important for us to know what is happening to the children in syria or to the children in yemen right and uh, right now it's important to know like how um different countries deal with those situations right solutions to those problems and that's something that i love about muns it's not just about uh, you know fighting and pointing fingers at another country it's also about bringing in very crucial solutions to a lot of problems it helps it helps you brainstorm if nothing even if you're not solving a world problem right to the very least your brain is working it's thinking about critical problems around the world and solutions for that 
and at the end of the day these sort of you know very small and basic uh, skills and qualities that you gain from this eca helps you out a lot in the long run okay thank you very much and like i really like the point where you said that you know it helps you brainstorm if not but the thing is mm-hmm. that in anyone's you, there are a lot of skills required or you ha- there are a lot of things that you have to be involved in you have to do lobbying you have to research you have to speak you have to you know you have to start networking with people and mm-hmm. you have to show great leadership if you want to succeed in so do you think that for the first timers it may get a little overwhelming and as a result they might not do more mums because it seems a little overwhelming so what would you tell to those people who have felt that you know it's a little overwhelming so i and i have to you know i'm getting nervous and i'm having anxiety about it and i don't want to do another mum this is why you- mums are diverse yeah so here's the uh, here's what i would tell anyone who's going through that situation right mums have amazing food they have parties they have social uh they have they have like you know the vendor stalls they have a lot of people to socialize with breaks and uh shows performances what not they have every single stress relief element there is right if i have a food and a party i would not be stressed but like oh. even so the academics do overwhelm you right here's a uh, a tip that you know uh, i've had i've heard a lot of amazing eds give to first timers they tell you to go very slow take one step at a time right you don't have to learn the entire rop or the entire uh, mandate or go through all of the resolutions at once right you don't have to go through all the tactics that people use in an mun you can start small i have a friend uh and she actually won an award in an mun just by giving point of orders against other people and asking very important uh, point of informations so her speeches her lobbying sure those things are important but if you want you can just start at a very small place right for example in my first time when i started with speeches so my speeches were stronger than uh, other things that i did you know the other things i do like a little of it because i wasn't sh- so sure of what i was doing i didn't know how to lobby i didn't know how to write a, a resolution but i knew my speeches right so i started with the speeches and i grew from that point and that's the easiest approach you can do to anything just start from point and start growing from there and once you have like you know one thing or two things that you are comfortable with it starts getting easier at that point and you'll reach a point where you want to take in more things that you're a uh, master of right it's that you're good at and you'd want to try out different uh ways of diplomacy or different ways of trying to compete but i think starting at like you know a very basic root level with one thing only is the easiest formula to go with okay that's something very nice that you said uh since you have been recently an acrat president of the icm union club how do you i mean what tactics tactics and what strategies do you use to you know attract more people to such a productive eca to you know make it a productive club even okay so i think what i personally do is i approach people with four different ways of why an mun is important for example so if i were to normally go to a class and lobby a few students to coming into the club right i would go there and tell them you guess what guys there is an eca that deals with a lot of general knowledge and a lot of uh, ideas creativity and international relations to begin with and then you can also uh, socialize you can also learn how to communicate with people and on the flip side you will learn things like leadership uh and you actually get a certificate for it you get to have that experience you get to have amazing memories at that place and you also get to be entertained so it's a full package when i tell them that there are like you know five or four d- different aspects to seeing an mun then you know uh, i don't need to read the minds of those people they will relate to what an mun is and they will pick on the things that they like about muns if like someone likes uh 
you know, someone likes international relations, they will latch on onto that. If someone wants to be a leader, they will latch onto that attribute, right? And then they will start to like explore the ECA. And that's all you need to do really. You need to hook them on to something so that they themselves participate. And if they participate once, they'll themselves know if they like it or not. Okay, so that's great. Uh, you know, the, due to this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, in our country and in many countries of the world, there are, no, there are a number of online MUNs going on. Mm -hmm. And online MUNs are being continuously hosted by HYD, by different organizations in India, in Nepal, and whatnot. So what is your opinion about online MUNs? Because uh, some people are not so sure about how things go on. So how would you explain it to them? And what is your personal opinion on this? So uh, let's be honest about this. Some people have very controversial ideas about the ECA of MUNs, right? And here's why I think that it's not exactly a proper ideology. And personally, I think that MUNs are actually helping a lot of kids out there. Myself, for example, because I've been helped a lot because of this ECA, right? I've grown a lot as a person because of this. So I think the online MUN right now is actually a lot better version of the ECA, of the extracurricular activity in itself, because you see, in an online platform, what you're having is you don't have to go through the whole uh, trouble of a venue, of having an event, of uh, even having an entertainment uh, segment to it, right? So this MUN right now, the online ones, are purely academic, right? And I guess it's a lot easier because uh, you know how uh, everyone has the equal footing right now. So everyone just go calls people, texts text their uh, text other delegates, right? And I think that everyone's in an equal footing right there. It's equally challenging for a lot of people if they're doing the MUN or uh, that is. So I feel like when you're doing an MUN, that is, you don't have to pay all that much because normally we have to pay like uh, three thousand or four thousand taka for an MUN, right? But necessarily these MUNs are either free or they take around 500 to 1K for charity. And personally, I prefer the charity ones because, you know, right now I could spend 1K on like extra groceries that I probably won't need because the lockdown might just be over because I before I finish that stuff. Or I could, you know, donate to people who can't even eat, right? And personally, I would feel a lot better at this moment in time if I could donate 1,000 taka to people who really need it more than me, right? So I think it's an amazing approach because, you know, sometimes we know that we need to give charity, but we don't know where we go. Like, which uh, portal do we use? Where do we send the money? What not, right? So I think it's an amazing, uh, you know, idea because you know that you're getting something out of this. You get to have an entertaining ECA to yourself and... A lot of people are being helped by this. And honestly, I do respect your secretariat board a lot for this amazing initiative. So, yeah. Thank you so much. Here's that. Okay, so uh, I would just like to tell this to our viewers that uh, in HYD online MUNs, both of our MUNs, the one done in Bangladesh and the one that we're currently preparing for, the one in Nepal, both are charity MUNs. We have this strategy that one delegate for one family, that means the donation, the minimum donation that we take from one delegate will be used to help uh, give relief to one family. And we have a lot of charity partners uh, who we help by giving our funds and they in turn help other people. So I think MUN is no longer just an ECA. It has become a medium to help people during a crisis. We not only speak about helping people in the world. We not only discuss about helping people in the world and uh, the different crises of the world, we are actually stepping down on the ground and we are helping people. So I think that, uh, in, that, initiate, that kind of initiative in a country like Bangladesh is a very big thing. So uh, Zafra Ma'am, uh, since, uh, the, uh, since uh, this is an MUN hack series, 
how would you advise our new delegates to go through it you know if you sum up in a way so that you know they don't back out of it because like we said before it can be overwhelming mm-hmm. yeah, so you know how can you continue your journey in an in an ec like mun and you know be really good at it and be happy about doing it okay so here's here's something that you know that intrigues me most about mun's and i've said this a lot a lot of things about mun's intrigue me um so mostly it's because you know i initially went to mun's uh, to have fun with my friends basically in uh before i actually like you know researched and constructively started doing mun's so back then i went to like the committees and right even though i was intimidated and overwhelmed and scared to be honest it was so interesting because you know uh, nowadays we're seeing such a diverse platform of committees uh, i did this committee once in scholastica i think uh, it was called sssia it was the secret service committee so basically you're a secret agent in the committee you're in so you're okay. in double committees uh then they have like crisis committees uh moving crisis committees actually they just randomly come up to your room and give you a crisis like your president died what are you going to do about it and sure you can get scared or you could get up and do something amazing about it right um so yeah these different committees i was once in um the national security council of the united states of america and our president was role playing donald j trump right So yeah it was really interesting because we had to play exactly the way those diplomatic people you know they act in their cabinets in their parliaments right so yeah uh i think in terms of hacks i would say that there are a lot of ways of approaching an mun right but i think if you want to make it easier um do your research well right because i have seen a lot of people who think that you know uh, i'll just you know lobby my way through or i'll just improvise but i've learned this the hard way because i used to be pretty bad uh, last year around and i kind of quit in march of 2019 and i came back with bugman this year um because uh, yeah because bugman was so academic it just inspired me to like come back to like the whole stage again so here's um what basically i suggest a lot of people you start small but you do your research properly so at least you can give your speech you know what everyone else is talking about and you can take from that comment you can learn from that comment right So if you know like you know the basics uh, for example if your uh, topic was your agenda was climate change right if you knew what uh, the paris agreement was if you knew what uh, you know some basic concepts of climate change which countries have more carbon f- uh, footprint right if you have those basic knowledge then in the committee you will understand why usa and russia are fighting about like you know who has bigger industries and what not so it's easier to, when it's easier to understand it's easier to like learn from them and when you're actually learning you can go back to the next mun because if you're not learning and you're just hearing words you'll just be bored and you'll never go back to the next mun so i guess that's one thing that's very important secondly use points and i love doing that right so i'm someone who raises a lot of point of orders a lot of point of information and you can you can honestly play around with that you can ask people about the things that they probably will never research and um i guess that's about it and in terms of research uh i guess research every single country in the committee i know it sounds like a lot but if you're if you're not a first time if you're not a beginner if you're through your f- uh, fourth or fifth mun maybe research all of the countries because even if you ask a very important poi to a country like haiti and even if they can't answer and it's a very important and constructive question you still get marks for that so i learned it when i was haiti once so yeah and then do a lot of paperwork i do that i make up treaties i make up resolutions so this once i was uh, bangladesh 
in a historic committee during the liberation war and i had to do a lot of paperwork i made pakistan sign the paperwork and i made uh pakistan hand over all of like you know all of their prisoners and give me money for rebuilding and yeah i i pakistan wow. read the papers right but they were just you know the words were crafted enough for him to not understand and i wrote an entire newly made constitution so wow yeah that's so amazing. do your paperwork yeah do your paperwork if you can make um you know one paperwork gives you a lot of marks and a lot of um ups in the committee people will know that you know this person has been working hard and your ebs will know your ebs will know that this person is bringing something to the table they're giving me words on paper right um make statements just uh, make small development projects right so for example uh once i was a uh, once i was a country in the balkans of europe it's called serbia and russia was my ally right so me and russia we just made a simple uh, paperwork just a few lines about a railway project right but a railway project is development for me and a railway project is influence for russia right so it's a win win game it's not just some railway project that people will benefit from because you have a lot of political gain from this as well so you know that actually got me i think around 5 to 10 marks i don't remember what but like it got me a lot of marks so yeah do like do very so different for very those who have people. done muns they know that you know how hard it is to get 5 or 10 marks at a, in a hunch okay, yeah it uh, is yeah so i think uh since it was the first episode of our series a lot of things may have sounded unfam- unfamiliar to a lot of a lot of our viewers mm-hmm. but just to assure all of you we will be coming with more episodes very soon and we will be solving all of your queries if you have so i guess um, this has been a very good episode with our guest delegate dafan mustafis and we look forward to having you again and thank i thank you so much it was a pleasure being here same here and uh, if you have anything to say to our delegates in hyd online and you and me um delegates um i have I have done an international MUN just a few days ago and I have loved how you know welcoming the delegates are to like you know international delegates and people of other countries so I request you to keep that up you know be welcoming it's a time of need everyone's in a lot of trouble work out work it out with each other and just have a good time while you're learning the ECA and right now i think that's all that matters that you have a say you stay safe and you have a healthy mind and you're happy okay so with that we would like to end our first episode thank you everyone for joining us today we will be coming back soon with another delegate in another episode stay home stay safe thank you <laughs>